Hey, how's it going guys? Zedai here. So today I will be bringing in my first impressions for Black Myth Wukong. Now, I finally got an opportunity playing this game since I was busy with, you know, life situations and stuff like that. But nevertheless, I wanted to be mentioning all of the good, the bad, some of the mix and some of the things that just didn't really resonate with me. Now, as you can read the title of this video, I already mentioned that I feel that this game is overpraised, it's over, just it's overvalued in my personal and honest opinion. Nevertheless, it doesn't necessarily mean that the game is bad. It really is not a bad game, for sure. But there are some certain just aspects of the decisions that the developers made just like questions it. It just makes me puzzled. Nevertheless, let's get into the good, the bad, and all that good stuff. So the parts of the story are phenomenal. I agree to the part just like when you're watching it and how they're actually portrayed is phenomenal. But there's also some of the parts are not very well done, especially since it is quite difficult for you to know uh, how this game gonna go through, especially if you have no knowledge on a journey to the west. It's just quite tough to follow. And especially when you go from chapter to chapter, you always be questioning it. Wait, how did we get to this part? How did we get to the chapter three? How did we get to chapter two? You know, and just makes it questionable decisions. And this is why I feel that you do need to have some sort of a knowledge of journey to the West and how and why there is a motivation of you doing what you're doing. Nevertheless, I don't. And that's why also I'm putting it into a bad category. But the parts that are phenomenal, I love the way when there's a chapter ends and there's like special kind of comic book, like manhua sort of storytelling, like a little story arc. I love those. It makes it so appealing, so beautiful. And ah, man, I love watching them. It's very, very, like very well done. Now, even though, like I mentioned, some good, some the bad, there are still a lot of things to mention. That is the best thing about it, is that it has phenomenal bosses. The boss fights, impressive designs of these bosses, and on top of that, they are so many darn bosses here. It's ridiculous, in fact, in the best possible ways, because they look phenomenal, and I don't believe I even encountered any repeated bosses. That's just incredible. Wow, it's incredible work done by the developers and so much dedication. And I can totally understand why it took them so long to create this game. Nevertheless, I'm still kind of even surprised how they even managed to create this game in such a short amount of time. No, oh, well, it wasn't exactly short. It still did take them pretty much, what was it, like half a decade to make this game? But still, this is incredible and very, very well done. Now that we are still in the positives, let's continue on with the positives. When the combat clicks, oh man, it really clicks. It can be quite fun and there's a lot of just phenomenal aspects that I'm noticing with it. Especially with the abilities and how you actually will be able to utilize those abilities. As an example, you can transform yourself into a boss that you have previously defeated. Oh, that is such a unique aesthetic and such a unique design. I love that. But unfortunately, there's a positive, there's always a negative, and it is has to do with the combat. Because unfortunately, the combat is very, just sort of restrictive, right? It feels dull, it's repetitive, especially the combo combat. Like, you know, you have an option of hitting your opponents with the light attack. You mash to a square button, on PlayStation 5, by the way, I'm playing this, and so... You mash the square button and you hope uh, just for the best that you can chip away most of the damage on these sorts of bosses. But the thing is that it continuously does the exact same thing. And I noticed just quite early on already that the combat doesn't exactly get, well, a lot more broad. Other than, of course, the abilities that I already mentioned. Now, the skill trees, well, I feel they are not very significant. And yet, there's also one more thing, stances. I'm sure a lot of people will say, okay, you can just ch change your stances. But that's not good enough. The stances, all they do is how you wield your stuff, your staff, right? But that's just not a bad thing. The same, you use the same staff all the time. And I'm noticing you just need to have a little bit more, uh, more of a button kind of combination. Now, I'm not looking for like a specific button layouts and your character can do ridiculous stuff. No, 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 not too overly kind of complicate things. Just make it simple, but don't make it 
this repetitive because I've noticed that how quickly it got boring in terms of when you're trying to uh, go after the bosses. Because mind you, this game is not really like an open world or even going from A to point uh, A to B, right? This game is more of a bus uh, bus arena style, right? You go through through one place to the next only just to face the bosses that's it this is basically the game and that's uh, obviously it's in very lame terms to explain it but again it's not necessarily that's a bad thing but still we have to talk about the bosses now it's not a negative i have to mention it unfortunately okay even though the bosses look phenomenal and they're varied and there are many of them as well so there's not just quality but their quantity included but Something about the bosses is very poorly done. It's just so inconsistent in terms of the difficulty. So there's some bosses are just easy, right? Easy mode. You can go through them, no problem. On the first go, you defeat them, not a, not a problem at all. And then some bosses, for some odd reason, become way too hard, way too difficult, to the point becoming even unfair. Because I've noticed that you can't exactly block in this game, now unless if you use a certain ability, but a normal traditional parrying is not existent here. And instead you have to dodge. And due to this, you have to rely too often on the dodge mechanic. But what I've noticed, especially in the bigger bots is they even if you dodge out of the way from their attack, and when their attack still lands on the ground, somehow you get hit. It just makes no sense, even though I know for a fact I dodged out of the way. And initially I thought that was just an AOE damage, but no, it was not. Because some bosses, like when they do that, and they do exact same attack, I know for a fact I dodged out of the way, and no hit has been registered to me. But sometimes, occasionally, same exact pattern happens, but yet I get hit. It's just cheating, right? This kind of, it's unfair. Like the way that they've designed some of the bosses and the way they can attack you. And because of this, it, this is why I think this game really needed more ways of kind of defending yourself away from these bosses and the upcoming attacks. Especially since abilities are not going to be there all the time. You can utilize them, maybe once or twice, pair the ability, but you have to conserve uh, your mana. Without this mana, you can't pretty much use your abilities. And due to this means that you have to tr rely on your traditional light attacks and occasional very inconsistent as well, mind you, might I ask, say, I should say, <laughs> uh, the heavy attack. And my god, the heavy attacks are not worth it because if there's like really fast bosses coming at you, good luck. Good luck, because you're not going to get away. And instead, you have to hope for the best. There's a lot of luck dependent in this game, and I don't really like that. Like, I really wanted it to be more skill dependent. And this game is that. It is skill dependent due to that. When you level up, you don't get stronger. All you do is get skill points. And those skill points can get you to more ways of actually able to uh, utilize your abilities or perhaps making your abilities stronger or perhaps uh, having different stances and things that you can do but you do not get stronger and you do not get better def like now defense as an example right your role stats do not improve all they do how you do improve it is by crafting armor and crafting weapons now again you only use staff you can get better staffs but they're identical they have no differences in terms of the combos that you can use now there are better st uh, staffs out there and they deal more damage and you have to unfortunately rely on this. But because of this, you can't just backtrack right to the old enemies or different uh, enemies and just hope for the best and maybe you can get stronger that way while you're leveling up. Because you unfortunately will not get stronger. All you can really hope to, though is just keep, <sighs> keep hitting yourself against the wall. That's it, that's all you can do. Keep doing it again and again and again. And this is why a lot of people I can definitely see already and I have read some of the reviews that people say I'm done with this game because I don't want to keep on being this challenging for me because it's so unfair. Because you don't actually get grow stronger, you actually have to, well, get good is a better word. But a lot of people don't have the patience for it and also just don't have the time. And on top of that, I totally understand the reasoning due to that. 
Okay, so the you know good, some of the bad. I want to continue on mentioning it, that there's absolutely lots of stuff to do within this game. There's a lot of content that, if, of course, if you're willing to look for it, because there's some secret areas that you can find. I really like this, by the way, and there's some even secret bosses that you can go up against. And because, like I mentioned, I'm going through this game and going like defeating all the bosses, I'm seeing it all, and it's phenomenal. I love that. I have to mention this, the graphics, like, my goodness, this game is a looker. This game is a beauty. It delivers on all the spectacles. It's some of the eye-popping areas to explore and some secrets to find, including incredible, beautiful music as well. Now, unfortunately, there is a few more negatives I have to mention. So this game lacks map, right? It just does not have, like, a little area of map. It does not have a big map. And so, because of this, there's no objectives as well. There's no objective markers. You're gonna have to go on your way and hope for the best, more or less. It kind of can get tedious. I don't know if that can be considered a negative. Maybe it's just design choice and made on purposely. But I do think consider it to be a little bit on the negative side. But nevertheless. So, one more thing. <laughs> My god, I have to mention this. I hate this. I absolutely hate this. The fact that even though there is no map, <laughs> Fucking, I hate the fact that when you're going through this world and you know for a fact that you should be able to reach this designated place, but yet there's an invisible wall. What's with this? Because you can clearly see, okay, I should be able to go to that area, but no, there's an invisible wall and it prevents me. And there's so many of these invisible walls, it is frustrating. I hate it. I do not like it. It's very outdated design. Also, I'm... If, it's quite unfortunate, but there's a quite a lot of technical hiccups. This game seriously drops in frame rates. It's ridiculous. I mean, every time when I'm playing this game, it's consistently kind of drops. It makes me feel, what's the word, dizzy, right? And it just doesn't make me feel good about this game while I continue on playing. I feel like I'm going to pass out any moment. Now, look, there's some of the good, some of the bad within this game. I honestly don't understand why it's been so overpraised, so overhyped. It's odd. Very is much odd. Like, this game is a traditional, normal, like an average game. It's good, definitely not just normal, average, or mediocre. It's not, a, it's not that bad, my goodness. But so far, what I've experienced and played, it's a great game. That's just one word for it. It's not fantastic, it's not masterpiece, it's definitely not game of the year, and it's just... A great game like you know a great maybe it's a score like an 8 out of 10 so far that I've experienced but again guys this is just my first impressions I will have my full review but I think I'm just gonna have that full review depends of course if I'll end up going for the platinum trophy within this game or just simply finishing the story I do not know yet it depends how how much more frustrated can I really be able to take uh, being you know while playing through this game because, yeah, there's some aggravating moments and completely unfair as well. It's not like it's hard. And I think that it's just it loses the appeal quite relatively quickly because all you do is boss after boss after boss and defeating every single one of them. It can get quite repetitive, like I already mentioned. Nevertheless, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Do let me know as well what you think about uh, Black Myth Wukong. Are you enjoying it? Do you think it was, you know, worthy of all the praises that it's receiving? And uh, yeah, do let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe. See you guys all. And have a wonderful day.